Welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. We're here at the market at Ridgely and we've got a great panel together today to talk to you and tell you about what's happening here in Fort Worth. We've got Amanda Ware, who is the owner of the market at Ridgely, Erica Ramos and Katrina Johnson with Steer Fort Worth, and Reggie Robinson with Funky Town Food Project. Let's get this started. Hey everyone, I am thrilled to be here at the market at Ridgely with Amanda Ware, the owner. Amanda, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us here today. This is uh, a crazy amazing place. Oh, well thank you. And my ADD loves coming in here <laughs> because there's so many things, so many vendors. It's true. Tell everybody what this is and how you got this idea to bring this together. Absolutely. So the market at Ridgely is a cooperative retail space. We have approximately 70 different local vendors um, inside the store and they can rent spaces ranging from a couple of shelves to large, almost boutique size spaces. So, and, and so give us some ideas of some of the things that are here. We really have a mixture of everything. Yeah. I tried to make it a one-stop shop when I was selecting vendors. So we have women's clothing, men's clothing, children's, plants. Yeah. Um, we even have grab-and-go foods. Okay. And a, really a mixture of, of just everything you could possibly want in one space. It's, it's true. My wife loves shopping here. <laughs> Uh, my credit card reflects it, <laughs> and it's it's wonderful. And lots of friends I know that are vendors here. Where where tell people the physical location where you are? We are located at 3400 Bernie Anderson Avenue. We're right outside of Ridgely Country Club, and it's hard to miss us because we have a giant dolly mural That's on the right. outside of the building. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> how how do you select the vendors when you're looking at who should be a part of the mix in here? What sure. Do you do? Well, I'm really fortunate that we have a. a pretty long wait list right now, oh, wow. um, which is, is great, so I can be a little picky. Um, I really try to keep a good mix, so I look at what we have, um, and then the size of space that's available at the moment, and then go through my list and see who, who matches the best. The best. Was there uh, some thought pro process put into where you were located and why you want to be located here? Well, I have lived in Ridgely Hills for, well, the whole time we've been in Fort Worth, 13 years A now. great District 3 neighborhood, which <laughs> yes. I love, I love. <laughs> um, and really had, this building has set vacant for a while, um, and I had watched it kind of all through the pandemic in 2020, and it was empty and um, about the right size for the vision I had in my head, and I honestly didn't even look at any other spaces. I knew I wanted it right here, and um, I wanted it close to home, and I knew that this area would would support it. Uh, and it seems to be. It's when I come here, it's full of people. Uh, we've done a lot of talking with small businesses, mm -hmm. and really focusing. I've got to focus on small businesses because I believe that uh, we put a lot of time and attention in attracting bigger businesses to come into Fort Worth sure. and the jobs. But we have a lot of homegrown businesses that we've right. got to put that support into as well. So talk a little bit about your maybe the challenges you had getting this place open and, and what that looked like as a small business owner. Absolutely. Well, the, the background is um, I actually have owned a women's boutique for the last six years um, called Cowtown Couture. Okay. And we really... I see your boots. They're yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we really wanted um, a brick and mortar. However, it is... It's almost cost prohibitive to do. Um, to open your own standalone store, the overhead is just very, very high. Um, during 2020, we had to pivot a lot, like a lot of businesses did, um, and just as the merchandise we were selling and what people were wanting and also supply chain issues sure. was a huge challenge. And a lot of the vendors in here had made their livelihoods doing um, large shows um, in markets. Which we didn't exist during 2020. Which yeah. were completely yeah, yeah. shut down. Yeah. And they were sitting on tens of thousands of dollars in, in inventory, if not more. Um, and so this offered them the ability to have a place to go and sell their merchandise. Um, but it was, uh, it was a challenge. Like I said, I think our biggest challenge was the supply chain issues after we were open. Right, right, right. <laughs> trying to sustain the merchandise level. Okay. Well, it's 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 full in here now, and I it see is. it's it's <laughs> it's great. Um, one of the questions I had: What do you see as sort of the future of the market of what's happening here? Well, so not too long after this location opened, I actually opened a second location um, in the north side of the city at, in Roanoke. Okay. Um, it's called the Market at Roanoke. Okay. And I see a theme there. It, yes, <laughs> there is a theme. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, moving forward, I, I don't know if there's going to be more. I would love for there to be more. I think that this is probably the future of retail, um, is having these cooperative spaces. Um, and 
you know, so many people have little side hustles and they right. do this as kind of a supplement to their income. And mm -hmm. so this affords them that opportunity. Many of my friends that are here, this is their side hustle. Yeah, They've got day sure. jobs, but th this is maybe their creative outlet exactly. too a little bit. Yeah, do you find exactly. that with folks? Yes, yeah. 100%. We actually have a space of the store dedicated to, I call it our artisan's collection. Okay. And it's to handmade goods. Um, and so <clears throat> that's where you get, where you capture those, those business owners. Those business owners. Well, thanks for letting us host uh, today's Absolutely. talk. I've got some great guests coming up after you. It'll be awesome to talk to them here. How can people find you? Like yes. website and, and social media. We do have a website. We're the market at Ridgely.com. Okay. You can also find us on social media, okay. um, Instagram and Facebook at the market at Ridgely. Great. Well, thanks for what you're doing. Thanks yes. for putting together what I would say a collaborative for small business owners to, to be able to, to do what they do. Um, and thanks for being a small business owner and, and really you know, putting um, a new spin on the fabric here at Fort Worth. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for, for being here today. Thank you. And now I'm here with Erica Ramos and Katrina Johnson with Steer Fort Worth. Welcome guys. Thanks for How having us. How are y'all? Yeah. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm very proud of all the work that y'all are doing and I've got obviously a special place in my heart for Steer Fort Worth, um, having served in capacities there, executive committee, and now seeing it continue to thrive under y'all's leadership. You're president now, right? Yes, that's correct. And you're president-elect. Yep, I will be starting next year. Yep, for, <laughs> so for our viewers that don't know about Steer Fort Worth, what is it? What What was the purpose, et cetera, why, why, what, what does it do? Yeah, so Steer Fort Worth is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that seeks to grow our emerging leaders and get them civically engaged in Fort Worth. We actually started back in 2011 under Mayor Price as a result of low voter turnout in that demographic. I think there's and like five, four or five percent of voters, 20 to 40, voted in that election. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and so Steer Fort Worth was created, and in 2016 we officially became our own nonprofit and have continued the work since then by hosting a variety of programming that gets people interacting with the city on different levels. We have um, events like our policy and pints where we touch on different issues and have someone come and speak to us in a more casual and laid back environment. We have recently hosted our civic summit that I know you were in attendance at where we talked about a wide variety of topics, had panels um, and panelists that covered a great, you know, great feedback on on all of that, and shared with our members ways they could get they could get engaged. We also host Generation Next with the mayor as a way of connecting our membership base to the mayor and giving them some of that one on one time that they so you know so desperately want. And we also have our elected officials reception where we invite elected officials across Tarrant County to come into a room, engage with our membership, and have our membership engage with them. In addition to that, we host volunteer events uh, throughout the year, and we also have a really incredible key holders program that I'm immensely proud of. That's great. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about that key holders program. I know you've talked about policy and pint and some of the other uh, yeah. things that you do to get people engaged, even you know, voter sign up, et cetera. Just yeah. ha have, having your voice heard. What's the idea behind the key holders program, which is sort of a subset of Steer Fort Worth? And, yeah, yeah, so our key holders program, I like And you're to leading it this year, right? Well, or no, I was the last two years. Okay. I yes. was in charge yeah. of key holders, yeah. and then I president elect I had to give that up okay. and give it to but some new people. There you go. Um, there but they're really great co chairs. <laughs> um, basically, I say it's like a fast track civic engagement program. Okay. Um, for me, when I was truly just, I was at a point in my career where I just wanted to get involved and I didn't know how to do it. And when I looked on social media and organizations, Steer Fort Worth was the one that was literally doing stuff all the time. Right. Some other organizations go inactive or don't do anything. And so that's why I started going to an event and then I joined Key Holders. And so it's uh, one event every single month and every month we put people, our young professionals, in front of the people who make those decisions. Um, and they get an opportunity to truly just ask questions. There are times, like I never would have gone to City Hall. Mm -hmm. Like we have our leadership session where we have our elected officials sitting in front of them. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly didn't know where City Hall was. I wouldn't have known who the, the elected officials were unless it wasn't for key holders. So we have our first session, which is over history. And we've done a kind of cool thing. Judge McGowan does this history walking tour. Quentin McGowan. 
Allen's great. Yes, great yes. yes. And then Mitch Witten, um, Visit Fort Worth, has been kind enough to talk to us about what's going on now, what's coming to the future of Fort Worth. Sure. So it's a good past and present. Yeah. And then we have our business leaders sit in front. So we've done small businesses. We've done, you know, with the chamber, having all of them speak. So every year is a little bit different. So we don't have the same people speaking every single year. So it truly is like you get your own experience when you go through the program. We have a session over volunteerism, how to get engaged within the city, one over the arts, because I think that so many of us are interested in what's going on in the arts, but we don't necessarily know how to necessarily plug into the scene here, and it's pretty extensive once you start looking into it. Um, and then what, I'm, all, I'm missing one of them. Talk about the government you, panel. You yeah, yeah, government, yeah, business, them. history. Yeah. Uh, oh, education. education. That's the, that's yes. the one yeah. I missed. And so the education one. And so we've had from the superintendent, teachers, director of innovation, a wide range of top people speaking on education. And the best part is being able to sit and be in that room and be able to put faces and names together. And you can leave and know who they are. And then get an opportunity to go talk to them one-on-one -on -one and get your questions answered if they weren't answered during the session. Yeah. Well, I've had the privilege of sitting on that government panel for the last couple of years. And it's interesting because you have a wide range of, and I don't think people understand it until you get in that room, mm -hmm. of how, you know, how many, you know, what the county's in charge of and what, you know, you, who else did you have in there? You had uh, some, uh, you had uh, the DAs and what they're in charge of, mm -hmm. what the, uh, the city government. Tax so, assessor. Tax assessor the was water part of district. Yes. And we also just try and make sure we have our events at different locations around the city. Yeah. So not only are we trying to get you engaged with what's the topic, but also taking to different parts of the city so you can see what Fort Worth is because we really kind of get pigeonholed like where we live. Mm -hmm. It's very easy, especially when you live in the urban core of Fort Worth, just to stay with your people, like your area. No, and I love that too because I think you've got to get out and see the other parts of the city and understand. It. Again, we all operate within our home, yeah. work, and maybe where we go, game theory and et cetera, <laughs> to, to, to hang out with friends. But if you don't see the other parts of the city, you don't understand. And that's what, you know, from my job, what I love is that I get to listen to my colleagues and hear about their problems problems mm -hmm. in their parts of the city and I obviously represent District 3. You're sitting in District 3 right now and I love it but I understand that we're a big city and we've got big city challenges mm -hmm. across the board. Um, talk, you talked a little bit about um, some of the things that you're doing. What, how can people partner with Steer Fort Worth and be a mm -hmm. part of it? Yeah. yeah, so I like to tell people there are probably two big ways to partner with Steer Fort Worth. Um, the first and probably one of the easiest is uh, supporting the organization um, financially. Um, it, for us, as Katrina mentioned, it's so important that we host events across the city. And part of doing that has meant our, our membership base has grown. So we really strive to keep our programming affordable and accessible sure. to any young professionals. So if anyone wants to become a sponsor, whether that's sponsoring the organization or sponsoring a specific event, they, they can do that. And we have some great sponsors that have helped us along the way this year. Um, the, the second is partnering with us on an event. Oftentimes, you know, we come across nonprofits like Junior Achievement or Southside Community Garden who are working on some really impressive causes and need an outlet or way to help communicate the work that they're doing. So they'll come to us, we work with them to host an event, create a conversation around that cause so that our members can learn, but also engage after the conversation's over. That's great, and I, and I think it's worth pointing out this is a non-pay, I mean, y'all are president, <laughs> whatever. The, yeah. you, you have your own business, right? Yes. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, uh, so I am the owner of Game Theory Restaurant and Bar over on South Main and the near South Side, right. um, based in District 9. And Katrina. It's a totally volunteer position, and you yeah. work for Junior. Yeah, I work for Junior Achievement. It's been around about 100 years, and we our goal is to get kids workforce ready. Um, uh, some of them are not prepared from that, that leap from senior year to actually workforce, and so Junior Achievement does it free for educators. We, we also are a nonprofit, so we do get uh, donations for us to continue to do that. Um, but yeah, we don't. None of us get paid to do any of it. <laughs> and when you look at all the things that we do, we talk. We were talking to somebody last night, and they're yeah. like, "Wait." None of, there's not a paid person. Person that's overseeing. No, sure, yeah. there's just 17 of us that have decided that this is our passion and we want to give back to the city, the city that we truly love and we want people to come here and enjoy it and if they're here, to stay here and be involved here. Right, Yeah. right. It's pretty incredible to work with 
other emerging leaders you know that are on the board or even are serving in our committees and see that everyone's doing it simply for the passion that they have for the city which is um, an incredible momentum and energy just to be around right. and I think speaks volumes when you attend our events as well well and that's that's an idea when it, a lot of what you're doing is awareness right just mm -hmm. having getting people aware of what's happening in the city that their voice needs to be heard um, and that could just be simply by voting or it could be by volunteering getting involved and getting organizations how, how have does the group how do y'all take it um, you know awareness into action what it, what is that sort of bridge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great question. No. And if I had a silver bullet, man, <laughs> I think like, we'd be in business, right? Um, but for Steer Fort Worth, what we've seen that works is um, having that full cycle of discussing, learning, engaging, and repeating that cycle okay. again. Okay. So what we aim to do with each of our events is create a space where people can come and learn about a topic. Um, a recent, uh, you know, one that we have coming up here is on. September 8th. Our membership asked a lot of questions about downtown Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. What can we do to, you know, drive some change mm -hmm. there? So as a board, we reached out to Downtown Fort Worth Inc. Mm -hmm. and we now have an event September 8th at 5:30 if you want to attend. Okay. <laughs> where um, Downtown Fort we Fort Worth Inc. is actually going to share their 10-year strategic plan for downtown and explain what a strategic plan is. Um, share that with our members give our members space to give input into that strategic plan. And then at the end, we'll also share ways that our members can engage on their um, implementation committees to help put that strategic plan into action. Um, that is a, probably one specific example, okay. but I think speaks volumes of how you create that loop for people so that they don't feel like, I'm just hearing what I should do, but you're giving me a very clear call to action and how to follow through on the changes I want to see. Um, so we do that, and then we also, you know, when voting season comes around, we do a huge push to make sure our members are registered, voting, and are aware of all the things that are on your ballot beyond, you know, the individuals on the ballot, sure. but propositions, bonds, um, and that's a big, you know, a big push for us as well. That's great. Yeah. Um, Trina, I want to add, what, what is one thing maybe you walked away uh, that you didn't necessarily know before, maybe not some, but just uh, something you've walked away with, with, out of this experience already, because you're going to assume the role as president, um, that maybe is going to form your, uh, the, how Steer Fort Worth moves forward? You know, since, since I've been involved, it, the greatest part about Steer Fort Worth is seeing how where people start and then how they end up as they've go, gone through the organization, yeah. as they meet people, as we engage with each other, and as we pr like promote and hype each other up and get them to where we want to go. Um, and I think that the most important thing that I've kind of learned, especially that'll tip me into like my presidency, is to listen mm -hmm. and to learn where does our organization want to be and where do the members want to be? Where does our board want us to be? Because honestly, I may be the face of who the organization is at that moment in time, but the organization's not gonna exist without our 200 members and our board of 17. Um, it's really taking the input of everybody and then learning what they want and how they wanna go about it, and then tailoring that and channeling that so that we can get to where we would like to go. That's great. Where can people find you? Yes, yeah. so you can find us at our website, yeah. steerfortworth.org, okay. and that's steerfw.org or um, you can catch us on social media. We are super active across Instagram and Facebook and are always posting updates on our events. Um, but I, hi I highly encourage sending people to our website. Um, it's how you can become a member. There's even a nifty Google Calendar you can add to your phone so okay. that you can easily see what's coming up next. Um, so it's a great way to stay connected with us. That's awesome. Well, thanks for being here today. Thanks for continuing to do what you can to educate people here in Fort Worth. Uh, really about everything that's going on. I mean, we have so much going on. I've often said we have to communicate better yeah. with our citizens, and that's across the board, and also engaging uh, the 20 to 40-somethings, the, the ones that are going to be most affected mm -hmm. about decisions we're making today, not only them, but their children. Um, and so thank you all for what you're doing. really appreciate you all. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, for thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks. And now I'm here with Reggie Robinson, who is executive director of the Funky Town Food Project. Welcome, Reggie. Hey, thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm happy to have you here. I think you're doing some great work. Tell our folks, our viewers, what Funky Town Food Project does. Yeah, yeah, great question. So I think we start off with a really strong belief system mm -hmm. 
One, uh, we believe uh, in the power of food to sort of connect communities, to connect uh, people to the land and then people to each other because food sustains us all, right? Sure. Like I can't live without eating. Right. Uh, and then two, we believe in, in sort of like the empowerment of people to have agency and choice around the foods that they eat and the food systems that they're a part of. And so we prepare our future leaders to tackle food insecurity in their own neighborhoods. Okay, okay. Where, where is it located? Yeah, it we're, located? we're physically out in uh, Crowley, um, just like just off the, the Chisholm Trail. Okay. So there's this like sense of being like in town, but then just far enough away to feel country and country farm and yeah. all that, yeah. Do you take kids that are, you know, I hear this all the time, if you're kind of inner city of sorts, that you don't really see this. You don't see mm -hmm. how food is produced, how it really works. All you know is that some, it shows up on the shelf at the right. grocery store, right? right? But I think you take kids out there, right? And kind oh, of yeah. show them the process and they grow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This summer we had an opportunity to, to bring some interns in and uh, they, they did everything. They, they tilled the land, planted, cultivated, harvested. Uh, we composted, we uh, solarized some of the property and then we took that, that produce to farmers market so that they can learn sort of the sales sides of things, the entrepreneurial roles inside of food. And you know, we, I had one girl that talked about like, I just picked a squash. That was crazy, and yeah. and like letting them see <laughs> what, and experience works, yeah. where it comes from. And had, the, and I'll I hear this sometimes too because doing work with a food bank, et cetera, mm -hmm. where they've never seen a squash. They right. don't even know what it is or how to use it or how to cook it. Do you get some of that experience oh, with the kids yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Friday, uh, so as a chef, like every Friday, I, I, I take it take pride in the fact that I can pull food off of the land and then we all work together to prepare it. And then I'm gonna give you food to take home to continue to like teaching people again around food and about food and getting them a chance to taste stuff they've never tasted and experience experiences that are actually nutritionally dense for them. That's interesting. You talked a little bit about um, some of the thought process. How, how did this idea come about? Mm. I mean, what, what was the thought process of like, why do we need to do this in yeah. the city? Um, our project, the Funky Town Food Project, is sort of predicated off of the Boston okay. uh, Food Project that they've started like 30 years ago, and they, they've just taken uh, inner city youth um, and exposed them to farming in a way that has like, like is radically transforming lives. Uh, not just from a learning standpoint or an economic standpoint, but then also from a community standpoint, right? Okay. Like people yep. are pulling together to grow their own foods and it's it's changing the landscape out there and uh i got with uh, a couple of guys court and kent and they they said hey we got to do this out here and court i was to like heart and kent bradshaw yeah right, kent yeah. bradshaw yeah. court to heart yeah got with these guys and and they said yo let's make some magic out here and i said i'm all in let's okay. get it that's great yeah the um what i see your passion and excited about what's kind of the favorite part that you oh. when you're when you're uh with this project? You know, probably this idea that we're not just growing food, but we're growing people. Okay. Uh, when, when I get a chance to work with kids, I've been an educator for 15 years. Um, when I get a chance to work with kids, to mentor them, to, to pour into them, to, you know, pun intended, grow them. Right. Uh, they end up being the kind of uh, people who we would want to vote for whenever they sit in city councilman positions. Yeah, that's that's awesome. What? How do you see the future of this rolling out? I mean, you kind of alluded to growing kids and all that, but what's the future fun for Funky Town pro you, Food Project? You know what I'd love, man? The uh, food insecurity rates here in Tarrant County are are abysmal. I mean, it, it's just tell, tell our viewers a little bit about food insecurity. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this idea that you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Okay. Because um, we've heard of food deserts, sure, and there's food insecurity, et cetera. Food deserts means you don't have a real access to any kind of fresh, f you know, foods, et cetera, within a certain area. Right. Well, we have lots of food deserts in, in Fort Worth. Plenty. Food insecurity might mean that they might have access to it, but maybe can't afford it. Or that's it. That's yeah. it. So, so let's say, for example, I'm making a minimum wage, mm -hmm. but inflation. We've all experienced it, right? right. So now I have to make the decision between, am I gonna pay rent so we can have a place to stay, mm -hmm. or do I go get foods, and then what kind of foods do I get? Do I get the healthy foods? Do mm -hmm. I get, you know, dollar Bag menu for over here? Yeah, you know, and so this idea of food security is so prevalent here in Tarrant County. Um, 
that the the future mm -hmm. is that we shut it down that we that we produce enough food that we get enough people thinking about food that we get a a young sort of constituency who has been exposed to an internship before they even go off to college right. and they have the necessary skill sets habits of mind and dispositions to make active change in their own communities that's uh, wonderful you you brought up too that about being a, a chef now you're an educator but a chef, I want to give you a little chance to talk about your own sort of entrepreneurial, oh, wow, you know, yeah. what you're doing now with, with uh, as a chef, Little Boy Blue. Yeah, so with Little Boy Blue Barbecue, man, we uh, we serve love and we love serving. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a uh, just sort of a, a passion project based on our, our grandfather, little brother, and I run it, and uh, we get a chance to to do what we love to do, which is to serve food. Again, we we are grounded in this work mm -hmm. that food sustains us all, and so. Let's make sure that we're adding love to it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That's it. Well, I, I was honored enough to go to one of your dinners recently, which was wonderful, oh, sort of collaboration. Yeah. T talk about that a little bit, the oh, collaboration Oh, man. So the, the work that's going on on Magnolia um, with just the boom of their economics, there's a, a restaurant there, the pantry. Yep. And oh, they're, they're doing. Natasha, a friend yeah, of mine. Yes, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. doing really cool stuff. And uh, they invited me out. They invited Scotty Scott out, who's got the cookbook out. And uh -huh. you got to get that cookbook. Yeah. It's crazy. What's it, you remember, what, what's it called? I forget. Uh, fix Me a Plate. Fix Me a Plate. Fix Me a Plate. And I think it's based on some of his grandmother's mm -hmm. recipes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so we, we just got a chance to get in the kitchen. And again, it was this explosion of people who are really good at what they do and then me. Yeah. And so I was <laughs> <laughs> excited to. You're good at to, what you do, too. It was great. <laughs> it, was wonderful. it was wonderful. Yeah, excited to get to hang out with them and, and just serve and, and looking forward to many more co collaborations. That's wonderful. Well, where can people find you? Funky Town Food Project and Little Boy Blue Barbecue. Talk about both of those. Yeah, so uh, funkytownfoodproject.org, okay. right? Plenty of information on there. And then there are going to be those who listen to this and want to get involved. Uh, we've got a donate page, we've got volunteer opportunities, lots and lots of ways to get involved. We're looking for board members. Um, as far as uh, our social media presence, you can find us on Facebook, we're on Instagram as well under the same uh, Funky Town Food Project. And then with the Lil Boy Blue Barbecue, again, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Lil Boy Blue, L-I-L, okay. B-O-Y Blue. <laughs> BBQ and uh, come come look us up. We we cater. We do private dining, private brunches, all kinds of stuff. Well, Reggie, I appreciate what you're doing and putting a focus on um, areas that we need to continue to do in Fort Worth. We're a big city. We're a growing city. Yeah. We've got disparities in, in lots of different ways, and I appreciate what you're doing to sort of highlight that and make sure that we're addressing it where we can. So thanks yeah. for being here today. My distinct pleasure, and thank you for the work that you're doing on the council. Uh, I thanks. love the way that Fort Worth is moving right now. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. We're trying. Yes, we sir. Got a, we got a great city. We got to keep it that way and keep it moving forward. So I appreciate you saying that. No doubt. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Love it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fort Worth Forward. As Amanda, the owner of the market at Ridgely mentioned, Dolly Parton on the side of her building, you can't miss it. Come check out the market at Ridgely. Check out our other guests here Fort Worth and the Funky Town Food Project. But for now, I'm working nine to five and I got to go do a business deal with Jolene. So we'll see you on the next episode.